by holy and inspired men of God. It's no joke. Man just didn't decide, okay, I'm going to write. There's so much more could be said, but not in, the, in one lesson, you know? So we're just going, just touching on the basics. Okay. So writers of the Holy Bible, could you, do you want to make any comment concerning this? You're open for any comments that you want to make. Amen? Or any questions you want to ask about this slide before we go into the other slide. The Bible is made up of more than 66 books. So they choose 66 books. You think the Bible is made up of more than 66 books? No, what I want to say is, is there more books in the Bible than 66 books? No, as far as we know, it's only 66 books. But they choose but, 66 books. Yes, yes, but as I was saying, I looked through the, the Catholic version, the Kuwe version, and I saw books like the Maccabees mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Sarah, mm -hmm. Sarah, something like that. Yes. But anybody has any explanations to give concerning why it's not these books were not included? I think Brother Chris would know something concerning that. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay, everyone. So far, she's right. All of you said right now, until now. The inspiration, like it is, it is not water, it is what, right? Right. Not water from Genesis to Revelation. It doesn't contribute, none of it contributes to the Okay? So there was, there was no books that was written. Yeah. For example, the prophets, right? You get the prophets? No, okay. Not and this was written in the book of the prophets. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's okay, it's what they want to write now, right now. They were inspired too, but as she was saying, over the history, only men that God used, inspired men that have, it, 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 it was like a concept. Okay? It was a council that said we have a council and we come together and we look at the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, everyone analyze analyze it and they realize that council wasn't one man that could be able to analyze it and they see this is what just like so let me do an example. The apostle, the apostle, right? Why did they make decision for the church in the book of Acts, right? They didn't do it by themselves, they come together and they call the council and they say, okay, yeah, this is the document we'll give to the Gentiles. The Holy Spirit led us, right? And we do it, okay? Right. Same thing that we should have back in the day. So the council come together and they write, they still like these books because all the books are consistent, the trend, one trend, right? From just generation, from Revelation to Gen from Revelation to Genesis to Revelation, right? Yes. And they put it together and they compile it together and say, this is the Holy Bible, they put it together. Right? But there was other scripture that was written, but it wasn't included in the Bible. They wasn't, put, they wasn't compile it together and make a Bible. Is that clear enough? Yes. Okay. Yes. So it was a council that come together. I think it wasn't like a one man thing, but it was yes. led by God also, you know? And it was led by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Because what the Holy Spirit would allow. That's what I'm gonna say. Yeah. What the Holy Spirit would allow, nobody could stop. Right. Or could have what what he's allowing. Alright. And you know, when we think about this Bible, people at they try to destroy this Bible so many times and they never get through it. This is such a special book. God's word in truth. God's inspiration. They can go and try to get rid of it. It's more. The Bible is common. Everybody has Bibles now. Can't get rid of this book of books. So after we would have dealt with the Holy Spirit, and who wrote it? According to 2 Peter 1 21, for the prophecy. For the prophecy came not in old times by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Holy, holy, holy. Dedicated. Dedicated men. People who were consecrated, sanctified, called out. They applied themselves, they availed themselves, and God used them. Alright? Now, tell me. Let us go to slide number four. Where are we going to deal with 
uh, the writers of the Holy Bible. Uh, I expect, you know, that when we are teaching, that, you know, we as students, we go home and we do some more research. Just as how it was written in the New Testament somewhere, that they were a, a, a set of believers from Berea. When they listen to the word of God, they make sure when they went home, they search the scriptures to see if what they heard was in accordance with what they read. And we should be doing that. I do that. Sometimes I sit and I listen to certain things from the radio, from the TV, even in church. And I am the person who, if I have doubts, I would go home and search and search and search until I get the inspiration from God. Because you see, people, different people would interpret the scriptures to their own your way, you know? But as the word of God says, no scripture is being interpreted by any private interpretation. Right? So, scriptures have to be compared. No, we will we won't touch that a little order. So, slide number four. So, it may not, the writers of the Bible may not be accurate as to who they are. But you can, as I said, do some research. Some people are saying that there were like about 40 writers. 40 writers of the Bible. So, apart from those names that you're seeing on the screen, let us look at the first name we see in there. We know Moses is one of the writers of the Bible. Moses is responsible for writing Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. These five books, Moses was chosen, he was inspired, he, he wrote these books. And so accurate. The Holy Spirit would never inspire somebody to do something that is not accurate. So that is why we say the word of God is infallible. Right. So it is said, so we read the book of Sam Samuel, wrote some books. Um, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Joshua. Yeah, Joshua should be there. Job. David, well, David wrote almost all the books of the Psalms. Oh, I should ask you, what, which are all the books that David wrote? Yeah. Oh, the Psalms, right? Yeah. Although we don't normally say Psalms chapter one, you know. Amen. So all the, all, all the Psalms. Mostly all of them. <laughs> and we have um, all right. But you know Okay. Right. We have people like Job. We have people like David. Well by the way, who wrote the book of Job? Okay, so Do some research. Some people say it's more. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Right. But, but thank God somebody wrote it. And it's inspired and it helps us so much. What of God is so real. Right. Solomon was a great writer too. Mm -hmm. Isaiah. And check on these men on them, eh? Uh, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, and then those who wrote those, the, 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 the prophets, they'll say major prophets and minor prophets, because they are shorter books. You have Hosea and Joel, and Amos, and Obadiah, and Jonah, and Micah, and Nahum, and Habakkuk, and Zephaniah, and Haggai, and Malachi, all 
these that we look at are Old Testament writers. And research has shown, and they added some more writers, yeah. like Monica. Yeah. They say Monica wrote. They say, okay, the sons of Korah. Um, Asa, A S A P H. Herman, Ethan, Hezekiah, Agor, and Lemor. Alright? Now, there are some more scriptures to prove that the Holy Spirit authorship of the Bible, the Holy Spirit authorship of the Bible. Oh, before we get into it, I skip out the, the New Testament. Amen. Thank you. So, people like Matthew wrote the book of Matthew. Matthew was one of the disciples. This morning we saw there were 12 disciples. And almost, uh, not all of them, most of them, or some of them, some of them wrote the New Testament, like the four Gospels, what we call Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. So Matthew is responsible for writing his book, Mark, Luke, John. Then we have Paul. He wrote almost all the books in the Bible, mainly letters. All right. We have did Timothy write a book? I know. Timothy didn't really write a book. The book of Timothy was written by Paul. Paul wrote letters to Timothy. So we could blot it out. <laughs> and Titus was another one. James. Who was that James? He was the brother of Jesus. Amen. He was the real blood brother of his mother's son. Yes. And Peter, Peter, he wrote the book of Peter. John, he wrote the book of John, and it's the same John who wrote the book of Revelation. Yes, he was divinely inspired. This is real. He was abandoned on the Isle of Patmos when he got the revelation directly from the Holy Spirit. Mm. And he wrote. Jude was another writer who wrote that book just before Revelation. Uh, uh, Jude too was another brother of Jesus. Thank you. Yes, it's true. And it is amazing. And so these were the, the New Testament writers. And what is amazing is that, you know, from Genesis right down to Revelation, it's, it took a number of years, thousands of years. Um, Sister Maria, I want to ask a question. Which I think the unsaved people and people have done. When you say that I'm the brother of Jesus, right? You know what some of them would say to that? Well, um, then, what if they were the brother of Jesus? Then um, Mary, Mary, they would ask which one, um, who was, uh, which one of them was born first in the three sons, where we saw Jesus. And what you would tell them? Because Mary was a virgin, yes. as opposed to Joseph. She was engaged to Joseph, and she was a virgin. Right. When the so Holy they came, Spirit... They came after. Yes, right. they came after because remember, she, she was married to Joseph, and they had children after Jesus. Yes, yeah, so Jesus was first in the womb. First fruit. Amen. All right, I was saying, yes, over the years, the writers of the Bible, you know, it, it wasn't just, just like 15, 
hundred years before the book of Revelation was written, Moses wrote. You know? And all the writers, the distance were long, you know, long, except when they were for the New Testament. But yet, those books, those writers of the Old Testament and those of the New Testament, they, they correspond. They didn't contradict. Because we see Jesus in Genesis. We see Jesus in Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. Name them going down the line. Amen. So, it's awesome when we think about it. Don't let anybody deter you from believing that this, this, this word of God is so true. So, it is truth. Amen. Just as Jesus said, I am the truth. This is truth there. No lies in it. So, let us look at some more scriptures. And we are not going to go into those scriptures. You could just write them down and go and study them. There are more scriptures to prove that the Holy Spirit's authorship of the Bible. Or the Holy Spirit is the author of the Holy Bible. If you look into John, chapter 5, verse 39 and 47. Acts 4, 24 to 31. 1 Samuel 13, 11 to 14. Matthew 23, 22, verses 43 to 45. When you look into them, you're going to see how the Holy Spirit told himself to be the author of the Bible. So, just, you know, to jot down the scriptures for your reports. Just look and you will find many more. Alright, I just want to slide number 9 and 10. Oh, you finished, right? The, the, the scriptures? Okay. More scriptures. You finished? Okay. So let us move on again. Thank you. To number 9. The Holy Spirit takes responsibility. Takes responsibility for the authorship of the Bible because this is the objective you know and let us see that we achieve that so do you agree with that the Bible does not contradict itself do you agree yes or no yes. it does not contradict itself some people might approach you with that Uh, yes. Yes. So 
all the bad things. Cain and Abel. Huh? Cain and Abel, yes. And so many bad things. And the ugly too. Things that... Tell me something ugly. Yes. You see? Sodom and Gomorrah. Um... Judah and Tamar. Judah and Tamar. Judah and Tamar. Amen. Look so. Amen. 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 Okay. They read all the interest. Right. Okay. Right. So, the Bible is a revelation of everything. We don't hide anything. The scriptures surprise us. The scripture surprises us. It embarrasses us. It calls us to repentance and instructs us in righteousness. Do you agree? Amen. 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 The Bible, um, yeah, the scripture surprises us. It embarrasses us. I easily see it. See? I am not fallible. <laughs> right? So you should come here. We can leave it to you, you know, for time. Yeah. It calls us to repentance and instruct us. Why do you think we are here? Eh? Why do you think we, we're, we can testify that we're saved and we're going to heaven? Because the Bible calls us, the scriptures calls us, the Holy Spirit uses and calls us to repent, and so we have repented. And now, for we to live the life that is pleasing to Him, we have to abide with those instructions yes. and thank God for the Bible that we can receive those instructions, we can receive the guidance, we can receive. All how he's telling us to live. Amen. Amen. So that we are in this process preparing ourselves to be with the Lord. To meet him. To face him at the Tati's judgment seat. Praise him. So, you like the instruction? Yes. Do you know that he, he, he chastises us too? Yes. You like the chastisement? Yes. You know it's yeah. very good for us. Yeah. We, we don't like it, you know. We can't take it. It's so hard. But it's very good to get the chastisement and be humble enough and submit ourselves to the Lord. Amen. Because you see, who He loves, who He loves, He chastises. Who He loves, He disciplines. You, you, you love your children so much. Do, do you take time to discipline them? Yes. Well, if you don't, you don't really love them at all. Okay. So, it is true. A lot of parents were very, very tough with their children. Rough. Abusive. We are not to abuse them. But we are to discipline them in love. Mommy, did I ever abuse you? No, I <laughs> can't say that. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Right. So inst to instruct us in righteousness. Amen. Right. So, hope you don't mind. I you know she was miserable. <laughs> and every time she turned, she dissolved to get a slap or dissolved to get. Because <laughs> she was, you know. But. She was a good child. Discipline. Amen. So Bible writers, no, let us quote the Bible writers now because we're finishing now. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Bible writers, or the people who wrote the Bible, are people from all different classes, walks of life. Just imagine that. Eh? You see, God is in His omnipotence, in His omniscience, God knows everybody, 
and yet no respect of persons. Just imagine if all the Bibles, the Bible writers were men with degrees. Lawyers only. People who went to university, you know, there are those writers who went and those who didn't go. There are preachers today who did not attend university. They don't have the doctorate or the, the, any degree, but God uses them. Amen? And that is why we have to be supportive and take what the Lord is telling us and not look at, you know, how they're doing things. I mean, if they make slight errors and so, you know, but it's true, there's always room for improvement. But God uses them. Amen. He uses us. Eh? Right. So the Bible writers include sovereigns. Kings wrote the Bible. David was a great king. All right. Subject to the people that, you know, the kings we, you know, <laughs> God used lawyers, wrote the Bible, laborers, people who were farmers, God used conquerors, God used captives, those who have been in prison, set free, those who were placed in prison, prisoners. Do you know people who who do, men who do a lot of atrocious acts that end up in prison, in prison, the Lord used them to write to produce great information for us to in and inspire us. Amen. God uses, God used fishermen. Tell me a great fisherman, a fisherman in the Bible that God used. Peter. Eh? Oh, Peter was a fisherman. Amen. And God used him. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. Because Jesus was the one who called Peter and said, I am going to make you fishers of men. And by his testimony, his um, transformation and everything, he was used of God. God used scholars. Paul the apostle was a great scholar. He sat at the feet of Gamaliel. He was educated, just reading his books, his, his epistles, all his letters. You could see that man had, he was really intelligent. So God used all these people. God used shepherds. Right? People who looked after sheep. David was a shepherd boy at the time. And uh, God used a physician. What was his name? Luke. Luke. Luke wrote the book of Luke. And he was a doctor looking after sick people. I don't know if he was an, uh, he used to perform surgery too. But he knew a lot about bones and the blood and everything. So when Luke wrote about the man who got healed at the, the beautiful gate, when he, he said that his ankle bones received strength, he knew what he was talking about. Because he was a doctor, he was a physician. He knew about the human body. He knew the man's ankle bone were receiving strength. All right. So, any, any, anything you want to add so far before we move on to the last? Prophets. Prophets. He used, he used prophets. All right. <laughs> okay. Who was a prophet? You know all of the writers of prophets? 
Right. 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 How about musicians? Yeah. How about musicians? Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, somebody always say God is looking for availability. Oh, we avail ourselves. And finally, in conclusion, as we move up, right, let us summarize. All right. Could we just read a little bit together? Holy men of God wrote the Bible as they were inspired by the Holy Spirit. So the same Holy Spirit they speak today at various levels. But no level of inspiration will be called the inspiration of the Bible ever. See this Bible? Two, the Bible declares its divine authority, complete infallibility, and absolute Sufficiency according to First Thessalonians and verse 13. The Bible does not ex ex contradict itself. Scriptures correspond with and support each other. No controversy. Alright. So if we are doing everything that is written there or everything that you know we Yeah. 
Well, yes, it's important, it's necessary, I mean, yes. Okay, well, 